The affordability threshold for employer-sponsored insurance has been adjusted for 2019. We're talking about that percentage that is used to determine whether an individual is eligible for affordable employer-sponsored minimum essential coverage under the IRS rules. Now you'll remember that people are required under the individual mandate to have minimum essential health coverage. If employer sponsored insurance is offered to you, then you need to take that or you will be seen as having had access to employer sponsored insurance or minimum essential health coverage, but denied it and therefore subject to the tax penalty for being uninsured. Or Alternatively, if you had access to employer-sponsored insurance that was deemed affordable and you didn't take it and instead wanted to go buy a plan in the marketplace instead, you would not be eligible for tax credits because you should have taken that first insurance plan that was offered to you. Now, affordable is what we're talking about here. What is deemed affordable for employer-sponsored insurance and therefore attaching that requirement that you should take that or otherwise pay these other consequences? Well, the affordable threshold is really an indexing that the Internal Revenue Service does regularly. But, you know, they haven't done it in a while and we're gonna look at that in just a second. The IRS issued a procedure bulletin and they did that on May 21st, it's called IRS Revenue Procedure 2018-34, and they identified that affordable means 9.86%. So uh, said another way, health coverage will satisfy the requirement to be affordable if the lowest cost self-only coverage option available to employees does not exceed 9.86% of the employee's household income. So the indexing that happened for 2019, effective January 1st, 2019, is 9.86% of your household income. If you're paying under that, then that coverage that you're offered is deemed affordable. You will notice that it was 9.56 in 2018, so this is a little bit of an increase. It had been 9.56 for the last several years. So even though it's a regular indexing, this affordability threshold percentage has not changed in the last several years, since 2015. So we've been looking to see if that was gonna be adjusted. But there's a more important detail on this slide that we need to spend a little bit of time talking about. You will notice that this, we're talking about employee-only coverage offered by the employer. So if an employer offers his worker health coverage, that's family coverage that's very expensive, and the employee says, I can't afford that family health coverage, and they don't take it, that's not part of the test at all for whether or not you had access to minimum essential health coverage that was affordable. They're looking at maybe you are offered the family plan, but what was the cost of the employee only plan? And that's the threshold for affordability. So there's a glitch in the way this rule is written. It was a known glitch from the second this was signed into law in 2010, and the glitch has not been reconciled ever since, even though multiple legislators have brought it to the attention of the Congress. It hasn't been reconciled because the Congress has been too busy trying to scrap the entire Affordable Care Act, not make fixes to some of the language contained therein. So let's look at this threshold idea again. Why a threshold? Why 9.86%? Well, if an employer offers insurance within this percentage, the employee is deemed to have access to minimum essential health coverage and therefore not eligible for marketplace coverage with subsidies. So it was a way to draw a line in the sand of access to insurance, access to minimum essential health coverage, and a way for the IRS to determine who gets tax subsidies and who doesn't. Now, a quick sidestep, and then we're gonna come back and finish talking about the family glitch. Our sidestep is some people, when they hear the affordability test, are thinking of the other affordability language that occurs in the Affordable Care Act. This is not the affordability exemption that you might be thinking about. Now, the exemption applies to individuals who cannot afford coverage because the premiums for their lowest price coverage available to them cost more than 8% of their annual household income. They can therefore ask for an exemption that they don't have to have insurance at all and not pay a penalty for not having insurance, and then they can move about their day. So there's an exemption, it's a hardship exemption for that coverage that's made available to you is way too expensive, it's an 8% threshold. And what we're talking about here is not that. So let's now circle back to the affordability threshold for employer-sponsored insurance. Remember, the threshold is based on the cost of the employee-only coverage, and this is at a time 
when we're evaluating what employer-sponsored insurance actually looks like. Now, back in 1999, the annual cost of a family plan for an employer-sponsored insurance was about just under six grand a year, and employees were paying about 1,500 of that in any given year. Fast forward to 2017, the average cost of employer-sponsored family coverage is over $18,700, and the employee on average is paying just under 6,000 of that. The cost of family health insurance offered by employers has skyrocketed. This is a way insurance companies are making sure that they're not losing money in the private insurance marketplace. We have seen that cost continue to go up and up and up, which brings this affordability discrepancy of the family glitch right to a head. To say that we're not even gonna look at the expense of family coverage when we determine affordability is ridiculous. Instead, they're looking at employee-only plans to determine if you buy the $18,700 plan that your employer is offering, you're not gonna be able to, to, to claim um, to get tax subsidies. This needs to be reconciled, but it's something that we need to know about. So a couple key takeaways. The percentage of affordability has changed. It's now 9.86%. The family glitch has not been fixed, so as family coverage continues to cost more as is being offered by employers, people are still going to be put in the very awkward position of having to determine if they are going to accept that if coverage offered by the employer as minimum essential coverage and then make that very hard determination if they can refuse that and go to the marketplace and if they do, if they can get tax credits or not. There's a lot you can read on this subject matter. Of course, you can start with that IRS publication itself. You can also read the Affordable Care Act's Affordability Threshold article that we make available in the Kaiser 2017 Employer Health Benefits Survey, which goes into a lot more detail on the rising cost of family coverage in employer-sponsored plans. You can also share us your healthcare story with us, what it looks like, what are you paying for your employer-sponsored insurance, where would you fit in the family glitch, would you get subsidies or not in the marketplace? You can ask your question or send us an email, and you can do all of that at healthwatchwisconsin.org. Thanks for joining us.